So good afternoon, everyone. Um, as you all know, this is going to be an interesting talk for sure. Um, it is uh, titled Sense Without Sight. Our next speaker is Sai, and without too much ado, please give him a big round of applause. And he's going to be here shortly. Sai so walks across the stage, um, stops so in front of a jacket, you might be and in front of a cane. That I am Daredevil. Uh, I'm not, sadly. No, probably better for my health. Um, and I do not have any magic powers, unfortunately. I just have extra disabilities. Um, that he produces a cane and puts it onto it the ground. For me. Um, nevertheless. One, two back, yay, live demo. Feels the floor. Do, 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 do. Where did that move? Are you gonna fall off stage? No, I'm not gonna fall off stage. Because you're like right at, you're gonna be falling soon. Picks up a second cane uh, from the floor. I can walk around without my cane. It's a little hard to precisely target it. But as you can see, I don't fall off stage. Um, so, um, just to make this clearer, uh, I am not faking this. And the way you can tell is I have a blindfold on. This blindfold is for real. This is a sleep mask. Um, I can't see anything right now. So you don't need to ask how good my sight is or why, um, because I can't see. Um, the issue that I have is light blindness. Um, basically, I can see uh, if it's really dark, and I can't see if it's really uh, bright, um, and lights that are as bright as uh, the, um, as, as these lights here, uh, actually hurt my eyes kind of right now um, through the blindfold. Um, so I definitely would not be able to do this talk with my eyes open and my glasses off. Um, I do a lot of different things. Blindness is not one of them. Uh, on my shirt, and my slides, and my website. There's all sorts of stuff that we can talk about. Uh, let's please talk about that stuff uh, and not the fact that I'm blind except during this talk or during my workshops uh, when you're, uh, it's okay to um, ask questions about that or talk about that. Exception is if you want to work with me on stuff or if you have feedback, I welcome that. But uh, let's talk about something else, like uh, how, to, um, how to analyze a few terabytes of court data. Uh, anyway, um, I have assistants for this talk. One of them is uh, what I'm going to be calling the helpful asshole, uh, aka my Harold. You're welcome. Come up. Um, Harold is on the stage, comes onto uh, the stage. I also have from the side. Bit. Where are you? Here. Good. Um, and I have someone running the slides for me because obviously I can't see my own slides. Uh, fortunately for you, that means I'm not giving the talk like this. Do to do to do what Deva just talked about, la la la. Um, he says turning around, uh, looking at a slide. Okay to make sound if anything, it's um, helpful because I can, I can hear where you are. Um, so you might wonder how I walked onto stage without my cane. I'm going to go over that in a second. But first, uh, the cane is really, really useful. Um, so it gives me a number of things. So for instance, right here. He has two canes in his hand. Not notice He's it, playing but there is the a time. difference in the floor. There is this carpeted section here. He feels it. Section here. Right. Um, now, if I just brush this with my feet, 
I can feel it, and that's how I walked on stage. Uh, but if I do it with my cane, hear that whack? You can say yes in response to questions. <laughs> hear that whack? Yes. Yeah. Um, so even if I'm lightly walking, the I just keep that the cane at, the at, a, at a known degree, and I can easily walk alongside of it. Um, I can also feel the texture. So one thing you may not notice, um, but uh, you may as well try now, is that the texture of the carpet under your feet, under, under your feet, the people who are live in this audience, uh, I don't know about you people at home, sorry. Uh, but this stage I have checked out, and it is smoother um, from the front of stage to the back of stage, and is smoother from the right of stage to the left of stage. And I believe that's true for most of the floor in the audience, but um, it's made out of separate squares. Um, so some of them may be oriented a different way. So feel with your feet, for real, like right now. Um, feel and feel if you can, uh, see if you can feel which way it's smooth and which way it's rough. Uh, with the cane, uh, when I drag it like this, Many it's smoother. When I drag it like this, it resists. And, uh, and especially if I'm holding it like this with a firmer grip, this is nice and smooth. And then this way, it sort of resists. It bends the cane a little bit. Um, what else? There's sound. So um, something that I can do really well with the cane uh, that's hard to do with my feet, but I can. So I can do Stamps. that. But I can also do this. He wakes the floor so with his cane. That, those two textures sound completely different, right? Changing between the wooden In floor fact, and the Walks Here, to the back of the stage and tests the sound in Here these firmer. areas. And then suddenly it's echoey. Right? Um, so that helps me tell uh, just sort of what ground I'm on. Uh, similarly, actually, in the front of the stage, so. And then your, oops, sorry about your mic. You know, the stage edge, it's really sort of resistant, whereas there, it's got much more of an echo to it. Uh, one thing this is very useful for is echolocation. Uh, I am not a bat, uh, but it is the same principle. Um, there are some people who are much, much, much better than I am about echolocation. I'm not that good. Uh, but what I can hear and what you can hear and what you're going to try to hear right now is the size of the room. So I'm going to whack the stage with my cane. What I want you to do is, while I'm doing it, close your eyes. Uh, you're not going to miss anything. The slide's not going to change. I'm just here. Um, so close your eyes and move your head from side to side as I do it. Uh, and you can even sort of look behind you. And listen for the sound of the, the, the size of the room. You'll be able to hear how large the room is around you. Um, and you'll hear uh, the echo of my cane from the back of the room. Uh, kill the PA for a sec. He smacks the cane various time, quite hard on the stage. He moves a bit around the stage and keeps hitting the floor. Okay, um, so that's a, a simple version. Um, another version is uh, 
these stage curtains, uh, how do I not face plant into them? Well, there's a few ways. For one, uh, I can just run into it with my cane. Turns back uh, towards the curtains. That's a speaker. Sorry about that. And that is curtain. Um, nice and soft. Um, brushes, brushes it only with this cane. There are several other things about this I'm going to show in a bit. Um, but also, if I'm... Sorry about the speaker. If I'm walking through this and I walk through the side curtain, sort of behind... There are speakers on stage which sometimes interfere with the sound as Sai walks past them. Sai is now in the middle of the stage, between the curtains. Oh, they've added extra stuff to the stage. Notices Yay. something lying, lying on the stage. A jacket. Sai walks on towards the left of the stage. It absorbs the sound when I uh, am tapping near it. Hmm? Yeah. Um, and there's, yeah, there's that. Um, Bit, where are you? Looks like you're lost. Do you need some help? Sorry? Do you need some help? It looks like you're lost. Sorry, it's made a few turns. Uh, thank you, dear angel. Um, no, I do know where I am. Um, so, uh, my dear signal angel, uh, or my herald, um, is representing uh, that person uh, who is trying to be helpful to me uh, several times a day and kind of annoys me, um, or ranges from annoying to actually dangerous. I obviously know where I am because I'm navigating this stage just fine and you saw me walk on without even my cane. So thank you, but no, I don't need directions. He's in the middle um, of the stage facing bit. the audience. Howdy. Howdy. Someone has so approached now. With uh, someone who's right next to you like this, how, do I, how can I tell that he's there, right? I'm not touching him with the cane, although I can. Sai has touched the other person do. on so that you, person's if you, shoulder. If I whack you in the ankle, uh, sorry, but that's how I can tell you're there, especially if you're standing really quiet. Um, it's really hard to tell that someone's there, in a, especially in a crowd like this. Forget it. Uh, so yes, I'm going to hit you in the ankle. Too bad. Uh, that's how I can tell you're there. But in this distance, I can feel his body heat radiating. Um, so from about this distance away, yeah. This distance, I can definitely feel it on the back of my arm. Around uh, 80 arm. centimeters. There. There's his shoulder. There's his cheek. Um, so actually. Sai has touched the other I'd person like you to briefly. Try doing that. So um, to turn to the person who's next to you, uh, ask their consent first. Uh, I have asked Bit's consent for everything that uh, we're going to do. Bit is uh, the person next to Sai. What you do is put your hand up next to them. Um, try to almost touch their cheek without quite touching their cheek. Some people are doing this. And then deliberately do so. So almost, Sai demonstrates. Quite, just by the heat, with your eyes closed, um, and then trade off. Yeah, go ahead. New interactions are sparing throughout the audience. <laughs> yeah.
Sai is sitting at the end of the stage. So, he just jumped place off that the stage. I is on walls. This wall, for instance, uh, the front of the stage. There's actually wind coming through these little uh, holes in them. Uh, that wind is colder than the ambient temperature of the room. Um, if I get my arm really close to it, then at about this distance, I feel the cold air from it. And then at about that distance, there's actually sort of a sheet wind uh, that, that uh, is really tight close to the wall. And then there, my hair, the, the hairs on the back of my arm tingle. And there, uh, I can touch it. Um, so we have people... He describes the relation to the AC in the stage. They're going to drive through the aisles. I want you to close your eyes and see if you can feel the wind generated uh, by them moving past you. So is now sitting on the stage, on the edge of the stage again. There are people driving around with scooters and skateboards through the aisles to the back. Some of them are louder than others. So you feel how when they pass you, there is a breeze in their wake. Um, this happens a lot in Congress. There are lots of people on scooters and hoverboards and motorized couches or whatever. There's three people on scooters oh, and one on a skateboard. Around here. Um, uh, or someone just walking really fast, like me. Uh, they all generate a wind in their wake. Another thing you'll notice uh, in Congress, um, there's these nice tunnels. Uh, so, for instance, from CCL to uh, Hall 2, there's this tunnel through the glass hall. Uh, when you walk through it, the wind characteristics of the room completely change. You start feeling a crosswind, so if I'm walking this way and the tunnel is on my right, then suddenly I, I will feel a crosswind from the tunnel um, that is colder so make small turns and, on the stage. Um, wasn't there before. Similarly with the wall, there's just, it just sort of stops. Um, next. Sai so walks to the back of the stage. Hmm? Another person approaches him. He Oh, yeah, 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 right. Um, yeah, so um, uh, everyone, please close your eyes. And I do mean everyone. Oh, not uh, the audio angels. Uh, or the video angels. Um, but everyone in the audience, please close your eyes. If your phone number ends with the number one, please sign uh, your arms in such a way as to make some wind. If your phone number doesn't end in the number one, point to the person who's making some wind. I can't see you, so I'm not going to judge you. There's flapping in the audience. So do you feel that? Yes? No? How about people whose phone number ends in one stop? People whose phone number ends in four? Just make some wind, like wave your arm in front of you. Feel that? Try pointing to them. Well, not the people who went in for You can point to yourselves, I guess. People whose number ends in seven. As with all the others, some are waving, so, some are pointing, some are movement just not um, doing anything when people move by you it generates wind when there's a tunnel when there's an air differential like the air under this stage is colder and that's why there's a wind out of it um actually
Sai moves to the left of the stage where two people are waiting. Yeah, let, me, let me hold your hand, let me get that for you. Uh, thanks. No? You good? Yeah, let you go sure? of me, please. One of the people touches his arm. His herald. Oh, yay. More stuff. So I approaches a chair, touches the border of the stage with the cane. So they found the steps here. walking downstairs. Sai vanishes from a uh, uh, line of sight. Um, if I open this door, uh, and I walk past it, there's this crosswind that I was mentioning a second ago about the tunnel. So here, there's just sort of flat to my right. And then here, I walk a little bit forward. Suddenly, there's this crosswind from that opening. Um, similarly, when people were biking by you, you could tell that. Um, similarly, if I crack my cane, I don't know if you can hear that very well, but try. Hear how there's... We don't see anything. There's a sound off to that side that it sort of ends at the door. And then if I knock my cane here, there's a little reflection through that door. And yes, I do know how to close a door. We should explain that we are sitting in a cabin above the stage one floor up and our line of sight is restricted, so um, we cannot see everything that's these going on. Walls. Um, I can feel the, that I'm close to the wall or not, tingly, not tingly. Um, what's next? Has reached the left stairs, hmm? walks them up slowly, steadily. Somebody approaches him. Ah, uh, yes. Ah. So, so talks to the person. Um, uh, uh, oh, yeah, you've added more. Can you move these chairs for you? So you can. Uh, no, would please. that be helpful? Sometimes that would be helpful, but at the moment, uh, not so much, because if you were to move it when I've already found where it is, um, then uh, suddenly it wouldn't be there anymore, and uh, it'd be hard for me to orient. Um, one of the things that is difficult about being blind is you have to have quite a lot of memory. Um, so the things that you probably don't notice uh, because you outsource your memory um, is how much uh, of the environment around you changes. So uh, ask a blind person, they probably hate construction work. Um, uh, I do. Uh, um, and if I try to go sit down, for instance, for that matter. Hmm. Looking for chairs There's on the state. Touching the chair, a lot. sitting on it. It's really hard for me to take a seat. Um, now, he doesn't smell that bad. Um, But uh, some people have a pretty significant uh, smell. Who's referring to the slides person? Perfume, or cologne, or Axe, uh, or something like that. 
The helper is peeling an orange on state. A public transit terminal, and you've taken the elevator. Maybe you know the distinct aroma of uh, the elevator in public transit. Um, <laughs> definitely lets you know you're in New York City. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, next group, start moving. Um, the helper eats so the orange. My assistants in the audience are, are moving through the aisles with something uh, in their hands. What I want you to do is close your eyes. Smell. Helpers are moving through the aisles with concealed objects. Now, what is it? Point to them. See if you can point exactly where they are. Mm. Yummy orange. It's five people walking through the audience at various points, um, all with different objects. I'm really hungry. So, if I'm walking past a coffee shop, for instance, has a distinct smell. It smells like coffee, shockingly enough. Uh, a drugstore smells like alcohol and cleaning solution. Uh, a clothing store smells like leather and this weird perfume that they put in clothing stores for some reason. Um, I, I don't know why, but they do. Uh, and if you ever visit one, hopefully you'll notice it now. Uh, so, let's see, next. Still people are walking through the aisles, the audience reacts. Uh, to right. people walking by. Uh, uh, dear asshole, you know your lines? You have a special line for the smell thing? Bit. Four people on state. Do you have your blindfold on? Uh, no, I don't have. Please do. Um, well, I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't have an extra one. <laughs> Did you move his blindfold also? Yep. No. Yeah. One of the helpers is looking for a blindfold to continue to the next part of the talk. Ah, kids bright. Mm. Ow. Cy Boris his blindfold. So um, now the helper is standing blindfolded on stage. First off, say, would you like some help? Well, I'm pretty confused now, so yes, yes, please. This is <laughs> <laughs> Sigh and the other person next to each other. So don't just, you know, randomly assault people. Uh, Arm on just shoulder. because I have a cane does not mean it's cool to assault me. Uh, then... If you're going to touch them, do so with the back of your hand. This way he knows I'm not just randomly grabbing him and yanking him around. Sai so demonstrates this. So I can offer you my arm. We can walk. Let's go have a seat. They walk towards a seat together. There's a row of seats on the left that they're approaching. There we go. There's your seat. They've now, arrived at the seats. Some people will, like, grab the hand and put it down. Uh, instead, I can just say, here's the chair. So I guides the hand with his uh, arm towards um, the chair. Uh, so follow me or the other person grabbed Sai's uh, arm and tried to push Sai down. I'm, we're not quite sure. Now they're walking back towards the middle of the so, stage. Um, let's do a little crack. It's a stiff interaction. Do you hear the back of the room? Where that is? Asks the uh, the helper. Bit. The other person is now wearing a blindfold. Yeah, I think it's in front of me, or bit to the right, maybe. Um. So, one thing you really don't want to do uh, when someone is possibly trying to figure out their orientation is to randomly come up to them and grab them um, and pull them. 
Um, dear asshole. Yes, please. A second person now approaches the two. Can I take you somewhere? Uh, let's pretend. Moves past Sai and the other person. He okay. thinks he wants to walk towards the audience. Let's walk towards the audience a little bit. Both Sai and the asshole are now handling the other uh, help a bit, pulling him in different directions. <laughs> okay. No, but, but you're Pause looking for, for the stairs, so. Confusion. I'm pretty sure you are. <laughs> You look lost. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm trying to go elsewhere. Now yeah. I don't uh, I'm fuck going. off, please. <laughs> uh, so uh, moves away for yeah, a few steps. Can you please point to the back of the room. Blindfolded bit tries to yeah, find not quite, is it? the back, uh, but is pointing into the audience instead. Uh, this is what happens when you mess with someone's orientation. Uh, please don't be that asshole. Um, if you want to be helpful, you can be helpful, you can be nice. So shall I lead you back to the chairs now? Give you like a hand. They hold you, you don't hold them. Uh, and then you can lead them back to the The blindfolded person is holding Sai by Sai's hand and they are now both moving towards the seats at the left again. And the blindfolded person is sitting down, having been guided by Sai. You can tell this is improvised. Um, and here I am again walking without my cane. The blindfold is now off again, and Sai is moving back towards the center of the stage. Um, as I'll show in a sec. Next. Yeah. Right. Another helper is now standing so, um, near Sai, but moving some of you may by him, have by them. A response of thinking, oh wow, Sai can walk across a stage or talk. Um, Slide or says, just doing normal things decisions. isn't inspiring or impressive. Um, I wish I were kidding, but uh, that does happen pretty regularly. Um, can we clear the, the stuff off the stage, please? Um, so instead of that, um, I'd like to show you something Putting that down the does cane. involve a little bit of skill. Um, Emptying uh, the pockets. Namely, about a decade worth of Aikido. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Aikido is a martial art from Japan. Um, Anna? A helper uh, is now entering the stage, so I've spent moving towards Sai. years or so learning to use a uh, cane. Uh, Anna has spent well more than that uh, doing Aikido and is a second, level, second degree black belt. I am not. Uh, However, I'm wearing a blindfold, and she is not. Uh, so what I want to demonstrate for you is how I can tell uh, that she's about to grab my hand. They're about five steps but apart, and Hannah is now approaching Sai, stretching out her hand, but still about three steps away. approaching me, the wind there, the vibration, as her hips sort of rotate face. towards me with a nice little fist attempt here. Um, there I can tell she's starting to lean back, and there I put her to the ground. Now Anne has fallen or been so guided back. onto the ground by a sigh. So sound. They're approaching again. Movement, airflow, heat. Here's the nice little head. They're close to each other. Vibration. Both hands in contact. The crook of the wrist. Doing the motion, slow motion, and he again puts her to the ground. Repetition of the movement. So and faster. Um, the blindfold hasn't come off. I'm not this isn't magic. And again, I'm not daredevil. Uh, I just can't see. I didn't get extra super special hearing powers. 
Uh, my, my hearing is pretty good, but it's no better than uh, the average person. I'm, it's actually a lot worse in the rain, so that thing isn't a, really a thing. Um, so just to, to prove that it doesn't just work in this sort of deliberately set up uh, special thing, Anna is going to just attack me however she wants. Uh, and I'm going to throw her around a bit. Sai has now their back turned towards Anne. Anne is approaching now from Sai's side. They are interacting, and Anne is on the ground again. Note Getting up I again. Focus on her. Anne has approached Sai again. They are again interacting in an Aikido way. Anne is on the ground again. I can still pin her if I want. <laughs> And, and grabs Sai's arm. They struggle with arms to each other. And Hi. Sai levels her to the ground. Uh, another helper approach, trying as well, and lands on the ground. <laughs> now they're both attacking Sai at the same time, struggling, arms held. Um, they're trying to stay up, but both are getting to the ground. There's quite fast movement all over the stage. While both are attacking Sai. Once up. again, tr Anne tries from behind and uh, is again on the floor. The other helper is again attacking and now on the floor again. And attacks again. Sai defends himself and on the floor. The helper attacks again. Defensive moves back and forth on the floor. Sai. No. And now both helpers and Sai bow to each other to help us move away. Clap. Sai is in the back, in the center of the stage. Clapping from the audience. And no, I didn't tell them what to do in advance. That's real. And yes, I am a little bit out of breath. Uh, whew. It's been a while since I actually exercised uh, well enough. And again, I'm still facing you, right? I haven't forgotten where this line is between the wood and the carpet. And in fact, I can knock it with my ring sometimes. Against the wall is a little better. We all were quite surprised uh, with the fighting. It was impressive. So if you want to not be an asshole. Uh, please remember, first off, ask. Uh, I may not want your help uh, or need it. And what you think may be helpful to me, maybe, probably is, completely wrong. So listen to what I say. And if I say, yeah, I would like you to please lead me to X, uh, that does not mean grab my arm and start dragging me to X. Uh, I prefer to follow people by sound, so I'm just going to tell you to scuff your feet when you walk. So I walks across. Follow you by sound, or to just keep talking. Uh, some people to prefer to follow by hand a bit. Help approaches from the side. So, so it takes the helper's up, arm or upper arm. Stage center. Like so. Lead me to stage center, please. They both walk to the center. Ta -da. Not that hard. Um, if you are going to touch someone, like a bit here, unless you know, you've invited them to attack you because you're doing an Aikido exercise. <sighs> Don't just randomly grab them and yank them around. Demonstrates. Uh, touch them, say, hi, my name is Sai, would you like some help? Hi, Sai, I would. Thank you very much. Uh, and then you can Touch the helper with the back of his hand like. at his arm. Um, are you lost? I'm not. You thanks. Might be. I'd like to go to your place, thanks. <laughs> mm, maybe later. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and uh, one important thing to note, uh, when people do uh, simulations of disabilities, they sometimes try to... Sign heels? Um, by just pretending to be blind or pretending to be in a wheelchair or something. Like you sit in a wheelchair for a day and then you think, oh, it must be so hard to be in a wheelchair because my arms hurt so much and I couldn't figure out how to get to the second floor. Well, that's because you've done it for a day and someone who actually uses a wheelchair has done it for probably years and years and years and has much better arms than you do. Uh, and they know where uh, everything is and they know how to get around. Similarly, I know how to get around uh, without using my eyes. You don't. Uh, if you just try to put a blindfold on uh, and grab a cane, or let alone those uh, blind experience museums where they uh, just put a blindfold on you and don't give you a cane and have you walk around, Actually, I went to one once, and they wanted to take my cane away from me. Uh, I was like, hell no, that ain't happening. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I actually lent it to, to my partner, so that my partner could uh, not feel afraid of the surroundings of, like, accidentally walking into something, accidentally walking off, uh, well, not a stage, but off a step or something. Um, so you don't know what you don't know. Most of the things I've, I've showed you in this talk, you probably have never realized that they're even a thing. Uh, like, have you noticed how many different floorings there are in the mess hall? How many Touches the floor again. There are? Uh, how many different sounds there are? The smells, the wind, uh, the ceiling heights, uh, you probably don't pay attention to that. I do. Um, and without the experience, you're just not going to be able to learn that. Um, that said, uh, I am teaching workshops. You're welcome to come to them if I still have the energy to run them. Uh, one is going to be right after this talk, and the rest to be determined. Um, my volunteers, could you please come up on stage if you're willing to be on camera? Uh, Help us are approaching and gathering in the middle of the stage. Um, if you ask the 35C3 uh, content crew and the VOC crew and uh, everyone else, uh, it's kind of a pain to run something like this because uh, I'm doing stereo recording. Uh, that doesn't affect you in the audience live because the PAs are mono. Uh, but hopefully, those of you listening at home, you've been listening to this with uh, stereo headphones on. And hopefully, you'll hear it from my perspective, what it's like when I crack the cane. And you can hear the echo in the room. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take a bow, please. Eight help us on stage. Audience clapping in there. Nine people are on stage taking the applause, bowing. Translators can't be there. Uh, we also have a question. Go to the Q and A qu slide, please. Uh, so, if you have questions and uh, you're okay with being on camera uh, and possibly being asked to come on stage, so I can answer your question, depending on what your question is, please queue up to the camera that's on stage right. And otherwise, there's cameras, or there's, yeah, sorry, there's, the there's microphone. microphones. We can also do just plain questions. If you don't want to come on stage, you can just ask yeah. your question from any one of the four microphones um, in the room. Bit. <laughs> Sai looks so for help a bit. For microphone number two. Uh, which I, one is two? Um, it's which for, one it's, is, for, it's which for one the, is the person asking. Which uh, one is the, the table two? one? Sorry? Which one is the one on stage right? Can um, I ask them on stage? Oh, um, let's see if they want to come on stage. I okay, did which which number? So microphone number two is n number two is number two is the microphone like in the. You want to come on stage? 
I, I don't know yet. I just want to know okay. if I can. No, no, I'm number asking. two is in is front the... of you on the A and number three behind there. Number one left left on the uh, on the A and number four. Right. Number two okay, is so walking on the stage. Number four, if you're willing to be yeah, so, so on the, camera, uh, could you please so bring the me my canes? Is right, right here. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, thank you for the really impressive talk. Thank you. Um, my question is um, the following. So when you, how, uh, I want to know how your uh, imagination works. So when someone says, uh, imagine a box, what's that you think of? Is that um, the, the material or how it sounds, how it feels, uh, just uh, how does it work? Uh, well, there I would actually go to my cognitive psychology talk that I gave at 27 C3. Uh, and a box is a category theoretic concept that has a prototype, possibly. Uh, it's like asking, uh, imagine a furniture. Hmm. Uh, imagine a box. Well, what kind of box? Is it a shipping box? Is it uh, a box of mate that are those little crates that I walk into, etc.? Uh, they're all different kinds of boxes. Um, is it an elevator? Um, yeah, I don't know how to answer that kind of question. So maybe I got that incorrect, um, but what I want to say is that um, when I try to, to think of, of something, I don't know, any idea, any project, plan, or uh -huh. etc., I imagine how it looks. So how, how, how I am at a certain place, how I, I don't know, for example, see a box if someone's talking about the box. Sure. So, uh, so my, uh, my brain works uh, like visually, creating visual mm -hmm. pictures. So um, I was interested in how, how that works for, for blind people. Uh, well, that depends on the blind person. Um, I have... Um, I've never really had a visual thought process. Um, so when I've talked to people and asked them, what is it like to think for you? So if, if people in the audience think about this, if you're, if, you're t if you're imagining like what you did over the last day, try it, okay? Uh, many people hear, uh, feel that as sort of a quasi audio monologue that's, it's like a voice in their head, except it's, it's their voice, it's not other voices. Um, uh, many people have it, like you have it, of a uh, sort of visual experience. Uh, some people have it as scrolling text. Uh, could I get a clap for anyone who uh, has their uh, thoughts as text? Anyone? No? Okay. Uh, I've met uh, like two or three people who have that. Uh, for me, it's purely abstract. Um, but if I want to think of a box, yes, I can think of a box. I can imagine it visually, I can imagine what it feels like, etc. Also, please remember, I can see in uh, dark light. I can't see here because it, uh, even looking up uh, is painful with my eyes closed under this blindfold. There is enough light coming through that it hurts. Uh, I definitely would not be able to open my eyes, um, and I could take my blindfold off temporarily, but that was because I was willing to tolerate some pain. Um, so with, if it's a dark room, then I can see just fine. So. Okay, thank you. Sure. So the next question is from the internet, so they won't be able to come on stage. Yes, Signal Angel? Internet. Yes. Uh, how do you feel about the app Be My Eyes? Be My Eyes. Um, it's actually not bad. Uh, there, there's uh, Be My Eyes, um, Tap Tap C, um, Be Specular, um, several for iPhone, which I've never used because I've got an Android. Uh, though iPhone, for what it's worth, uh, has, uh, and Mac products in general, have really excellent uh, support for blind people. Um, Tap Tap C is useful. Um, it's not as useful for me because at home, uh, like if I want to identify a can of soup or whatever, uh, I will just look at it with the lights down so I can see it myself. Uh, and it's too much of a pain to use if I'm out, like if I'm grocery shopping. That's uh, something that's a real pain to do. Uh, and an accessibility issue for those of you thinking about such things. Uh, if you only uh, if you only support the uh, operation search uh, or the operation lookup, 
and say, I walk into a grocery store, which I have done, shock, yeah, I know, uh, and they come up to me and say, hey, how can I help you? What do you want? I say, well, I don't know what I want. What do you have? I would like a savory snack that's vegetarian. What do you have? They're like, well, what do you want? <laughs> name it. And if I name it, they'll get it for me. Uh, but I, I, I don't know, especially if I'm in Germany. I have no idea what they sell here. Um, yet they still ask me that. Uh, um, so browsing is much harder. And with tap tap C and uh, with Be My Eyes and so forth, it's really for identifying a specific object. Um, uh, one thing that you may not be used to here, but in more barbaric countries, all the paper currency is the same size and has no distinguishing features. Uh, except for the next print run, because the American Federation for the Blind sued the US Treasury and won. So the next generation of bills, except for the $1 note, which the Treasury is not allowed to change by law, uh, but the next generation uh, will have blind accessibility features. Uh, here, they have different sizes. Uh, if you feel your euros, they have a little strip uh, on the edge of them. Um, and uh, some versions of them have little braille dots that you can tell what they are. Um, so that's, the that's dots. not as bad here. But yeah, uh, Be My Eyes is more useful for someone who's, who's blind at home as well. Another but question. It's a great app. Another question from microphone four. That's to the right of the stage. Uh, yep. They can ask from there, but if they want to come up. Uh, Thank you. You want to come up? Uh, ask first. Ask first. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to. Sorry for all the. Um, hey, uh, so Howdy. it was um, very impressive how, my, how you pick up on all, on all these things that like, I normally don't. So I was really curious when you meet a new person, mm -hmm. uh, what, do you pick up, what do you pick up about them? Like how do you assess the person? How do you know they're like interesting, attractive? Like how do you? Because uh, I use well, visual cues for that, so. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to answer you assuming that I'm, I'm blind at the time. Uh, if they come up to me and say, how much can you see, then they're probably not a person I want to continue interacting with. Uh, if there's someone who comes up to me, they've read my shirt about all sorts of different things that we can have a conversation about that's substantive, uh, and they say, hey, uh, how would you like to implement liquid democracy? Or how do you make a nonlinear writing system or something than that, like that, then they're more likely an interesting person. Uh, or if they introduce themselves and are nice, uh, how do you evaluate people? Like, you, you can't evaluate them just by what they look like. Um, I can tell your age and your approximate gender and your approximate uh, uh, place that you, you were raised linguistically, and uh, if you were at my, uh, at the same floor level, I can tell your height. Uh, I can probably tell roughly your weight, uh, just from uh, your, your heat, your, the sound of your voice, the amount of pressure that you're making on the floor, depending on what kind of floor it is, like if it's the stone out in the mess, I'm not going to get anything from that. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, blind people can be racist too, if, if that's what you're <laughs> thinking. So uh, I describes everything with his hands. Everybody can be racist. We're all a little bit racist. Um, Dancing. Yeah. Same way to anyone else. So we'll do one last question for microphone number two. That's center aisle. So thank you for your talk. I think that was very inspiring. Um, I was wondering, most of the message that you showed were rather analog. So have you also tried something like a, maybe a smart cane, so where you have some more technical approach to detecting surfaces and obstacles or other things? Uh, and what's your experience yeah. Hopefully with this kind of thing? Hopefully my slide is, is still up there where it says I'd be interested in collaborating on that. Um, uh, uh, Eric Boyd at uh, Sensebridge of, of Noisebridge, where I used to be, uh, made a nice anklet called the North Paw. Um, which is basically a series of pager buzzers that vibrate to point to which way is north. 
Uh, I sadly broke mine, and if any of you have a working one, I would really like to have it. Uh, absolute orientation is really difficult. Um, so relative orientation, like what I was doing with the Aikido, I can tell like where someone is, I can f uh, focus on them, but then it's easy to lose track of which way you're facing. Um, so something like that is quite useful. There are some products that do this on demand. So um, I forget what it was called, but the uh, LHZ uh, Dresden had uh, this uh, product, which is a tactile feedback compass and clock. So it'll, if you click it, and it'll, it'll vibrate in different ways to tell you like which way you're facing. Um, but that's, it doesn't really work very well. Uh, what you would want is something continuous. I've heard of canes where they've like attached a camera to either the cane or to the to the grip, and it beeps or something uh, when there's something there. Um, I've never used one, uh, so I can't comment on that directly. But uh, from blind friends who've told me about experiences with them. They tend to be engineered by sighted people who have no idea what it's like to be blind. Uh, that said, it is true that tree branches are a real obstacle uh, because if I try to sweep something and something is above this height, right? Like a tree branch. Roughly one meter from floor. Um, or a metal sign like in Boston or DC or New York or, well, really anywhere. At, in at height? Uh, uh, not so much in London. They're pretty good about that, except for the one time I walked into a government building and there was a monitor affixed to the wall at this height. Uh, at height? I the column, hit the column. I knew there was a column there, and I was just walking past the column and walked smack into the monitor. Uh, this was in a government building, sadly. Demonstrating uh, was they're pretty good about it, and I haven't found any like that here. Um, but trees, there's always trees. Um, bus stops uh, often have sort of the the sign on this on on the side, right? And there's like this gap that might be say this high, uh, because I have 30 centimeters from ground. Cane. Uh, canes are usually anywhere between sternum and nose, and mine is sort of just at the edge of my nose if I'm standing up tall. Um, it's quite long because I walk really fast. Uh, so mine has a lower angle, and that means that it's more likely to go under that, and then I'll hit it like here when I'm almost at it. Tangles up my cane. It's kind of a pain. Um, yeah, so uh, it's possible that something that detects uh, a higher range would be useful. One thing that I'm specifically interested in because... Uh, it's something I'm bad at, is absolute orientation. So if you are an engineer or a hacker who uh, is interested in uh, collaborating on something like um, putting, I don't know, putting little things in the cane grip or in a hat or on uh, the side of eyeglasses or something like that, um, that would tell me which way is north constantly, uh, please get in touch. Um, or for that matter, if you can make glasses that will take standard lenses and have zero light leakage, uh, please get in touch. Because uh, turns out there aren't any such frames on the market for some reason. Um, that's a technology, but um, uh, but it ain't there. So, so I think we're out of time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sai, for a very interesting talk. Big round of applause. Thank you for listening. This was the live description.